Hello, it's Dawn Michelle from Boho Tarot, and welcome to the next video in my deck collection series. Today we'll be taking a look at my decks with a very soulful or heart-centered energy. Most of these decks could have just as easily found a place in one of my other themes, as they have some very earthy and otherworldly decks as well as some contemporary ones, but beneath their artistic style and theme lies a very soulful or heart-centered energy. So while these decks may fit comfortably elsewhere, I have divided them into their own category as they have a very soulful, heart-centered, spiritual, or supportive nature. There are a total of 14 decks featured in this video and you will find a complete list in the description below. As I've mentioned before, I've included both tarot and oracle in this video, but you will find all of the oracle decks at the end. So let's wrap ourselves up in the inspiring energy of my soulful and heart-centered tarot and oracle decks. Okay, here we have my Shea Monet Tarot. Um, beautiful backs, which I absolutely love. I have edged this one in black with my black Prismacolor marker. It's my favorite one. This is such a gorgeous deck. I think like it is so soulful and so heart-centered. Kind of has a watery, you know, feel to it, of course, because it's watercolors, but you also definitely get that vibe from it. Um, it's just a gorgeous deck. You know, people talk about soul decks. This would kind of be mine if I had to pick a soul deck. It's just, I, I love everything about it. I love every card. There is nothing that doesn't resonate. Um, um, it's kind of weird and it's kind of quirky, but it's also extremely powerful and I love it. It's one of my favorites. So we're gonna flip through there. So that is the um, Shea Monet Tarot, beautiful backs. Again, I've edged it. Definitely one of my top 10 decks, I think. Okay, up next we have the Tarot of the Spirit. You can see it comes in a tuck box. I have not made a bag for this one yet because in truth, I have not used this deck um, at all. It comes with this little um, Kabbalah Tree of Life overlay here with plastics kind of neat i'm not really into kapala at this point but be interesting for study um i just really i really like the artwork in this deck and it has a lot of associations there is a larger book um, it comes with the little you know the standard little white book and there is a larger book that i do intend to get but as i haven't had time to actually work on this deck i haven't purchased it yet but i I have heard that there's a lot of really interesting things going on in terms of the artwork and the symbolism and the correspondences. So I like that the courts are, um, you know, mother, brother, sister, father. And um, yeah, it's just, I think it's a gorgeous deck. I kind of want to trim it, but I don't really want to lose the titles. Maybe I'll just trim the copyright off the side. But um, anyway, it's a deck I haven't used uh, yet but I am definitely looking forward to working with it and doing some kind of deep dive study into this deck when I have um, the time to really dedicate to it because I think the artwork is really gorgeous and I really have heard some wonderful things about it. There is the beautiful backs. So that is the Tarot of the Spirit. Here we have the um, Margaret Peterson. I'm not really sure if it's Margaret or Marguerite. I read it as Marguerite, but I hear everybody say Mar Margaret. So um, it's got these beautiful backs. Um, I am, I do plan on trimming this deck just because it's so incredibly large and I'm probably just gonna take this much off where the um, border is. But anyway, that's, I don't know, we'll see. This is a gorgeous deck and one that I think is definitely um, soulful and heart-centered. Um, but this is a deck that I really haven't had a chance to dive really deep into um, because I think that it deserves a great deal of attention and study. I have definitely spent some time looking through these beautiful images, but I haven't had a chance to really dive deep into it. Um, I hear the book just has this little book with it. I hear this is quite wonderful, so I have not had a chance to read it, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, the images are just stunning. I mean, look at that for the crone. How gorgeous is that? And get my thumb out of the way would be helpful. Anyway, I just, oh, I think they're so beautiful, but I think that they really deserve some time and attention to really dive deep into the imagery, to read the book, maybe work intuitively um, for 
for now, since I've gotten it, I mean, look how beautiful that is. Um, I've really only done some um, work in terms of, you know, kind of some meditation with this deck and really just looking through the gorgeous images. I've not done any readings because I really do want to um, give this deck some time for some study. So that is the Margaret or Marguerite Peterson Tarot. And here we have the Art of Love Tarot. Um, this is quite a chunky deck, which is why I accidentally made the bag too big, but beautiful backs. I really do like the backs. It's very glossy, which I'm not fond of. This is actually my second copy of this because the first copy I got, the lamination was already starting to peel on several of the cards, so I got a replacement deck, which was awesome. Um, anyway, this is a deck that I really wasn't sure about. The artwork is beautiful, of course. You know, it's Tony Salerno artwork, and you see it on a lot of different decks. Um, it's on a lot of different Oracle decks. And I did think about just getting the Oracle decks. Um, love this card. This was the card, one of the reasons why I decided to buy the decks. I just really love that interpretation of, of it. Um, anyway, I this is the second Angel deck I've ever bought, and I, you know, I'm not really fond of the angel imagery in it, but it's still beautiful artwork. Um, anyway, I just think the images are really gorgeous, and I decided to get the tarot instead of the oracles, honestly, because there's more cards. That really was what it came down to. I really just wanted the artwork, and I wasn't really too terribly worried about, um, you know, it being a tarot. I just wanted the maximum amount of artwork I could get. So 78 cards, more than in an oracle most of the time. Anyway, it's a, the artwork is absolutely beautiful and the um, keywords and the titles, so all the suits have been, you know, renamed to angels, hearts, trees, and stars, which, you know, is cute. That's uh, not my favorite, but it's cute. Um, anyway, it really, it actually does read really well. I was actually kind of surprised by this deck. Um, I've done some readings, um, a couple for myself and then quite a few for um, friends, and it works really well for really heart-centered readings. Um, I found it's definitely best for that. It's not really, it, it does sugarcoat a little bit, so I would consider it's kind of gentle, which I think makes it really good for those really emotional, you know, really heart-stirring readings that you're doing. There are some cards that are a little bit more um, confronting, but overall it's a very gentle, very affirming deck, and um, I have found it one that people really do resonate with, so I'm, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to trim it or anything, but yeah, just I guess kind of a short little review. So that is the um, Art of Love Tarot. So next up we have the Victorian Romantic Tarot, and I did not make a bag for this because, you know, the box. Mm, it's just gorgeous. If every deck came in a box like this, I would never make another bag. Um, anyway, this is a deck that, again, I've spoke about on my channel before. This is the third edition, which is gilded. Um, the backs are beautiful. I'm actually not overly fond of the gilding, so I've actually been on the lookout for a non-gilded version, um, just because... I don't know. I think it kind of takes away some of the depth of the imagery. That being said, this is an absolute gorgeous deck. I love it. Um, it's definitely one of my um, favorite decks to read with just for more um, heart-centered readings. It's just a very lovely um, deck. I mean, it doesn't pull any punches for sure. It doesn't shy away from, you know, the harder things. But I just think it's it's so gorgeous that it just feels very, very heart-centered. It feels like a very lovely supportive deck, but it's not afraid to uh, tell you what you need to hear. So I really love that about it. I mean, everybody's seen it, but it's a gorgeous deck. Um, I spoke about it quite a bit in my 31 Days of Tarot video, so I won't go into a great amount of detail here. I've not edged it yet. I'm thinking about edging it in gold. But again, like I said, not fond of the gilding, so I'm actually looking for a non-gilded version. But anyway, that is the Victorian Romantic Tarot. So here we have the Fairy Tale Tarot. Cute, beautiful key back 
on this deck. This is actually the Spanish version because the English version is out of print and stupid expensive and I won't pay that much money for it. I also have the app on my phone. So I have all of the cards and the full book in English if I just use the app. So it totally works for me. Um, this deck is like, it's so sweet. It's so heart centered. Um, I mean, it definitely could be in an, in my, you know, otherworldly collection because it's, it's fairy tales and it is definitely, um, otherworldly, but I feel like even more than that, it's very heart centered. It definitely takes you back to, you know, to a time of, of magic and wonder and innocence and, you know, and also, you know, a little bit of some scary times too, right? Childhood isn't all lollipops and, you know, summer days. So anyway, it's just a gorgeous deck. I love it. I do, I do love reading with it. I tend to read with this deck just, um, more intuitively only because it's, you know, I have to actually get my phone and use the app to read the um, interpretations, but I have read all of the little stories and that is just fabulous. Um, I really enjoyed reading the stories and occasionally I will pull a card and just read the story and that's, you know, that's the message is the story. But a lot of times when I read with this deck, I just read with it sort of intuitively let the artwork tell me, tell me its own story. So that is the fairy tale tarot, and this is the Spanish edition. Up next, we have the chrysalis tarot. Um, so my chrysalis tarot has been edged, which I spoke about in my mod video. And this is a deck that is just, it's so gorgeous. I love the artwork. Um, this deck to me is very heart-centered and soulful in, in its energy, in its messages. Um, for the most part, I find it very um, reassuring, very comforting. I mean, it does, it will, it will tell you like it is from time to time, but it does so with a gentle voice, I feel. You know, I've heard some other people who don't have that, um, that same type of interaction with the deck, and I always find that so fascinating. But for me, this is a very gentle, you know, here, it may be not so great information, but I'll give it to you in a, in a easily digestible format, if that makes any sense. Um, I do have the expanded guidebook for this deck and I have not read it yet. It's like one of those that's on my list. What a beautiful devil. Um, it's on my list to, to read and to dive deep into, but I just haven't had the opportunity. Um, I have done lots of readings with this deck either way, but I am really looking forward to diving into this system because I read it more based on my um, knowledge of tarot, but I do understand that it does have its own system. One of my favorite cards in the deck, absolutely love that. And I really do wanna be able to dive deep into that and get to know that a little bit better and read it kind of as the um, creators intended. So I'm looking forward to that adventure with this deck, and that is the Chrysalis Tarot. We have the beautiful Paulina Tarot, and this is a fairly new deck to my collection, so I have not had time to make it a bag, so it's still living in its little tuck box. This is a deck, oops, had that backwards, forgot to show you the backs, love the backs. They're beautiful. Um, this is a deck that easily could be in my Bad Mood Busters collection because this is a deck that really makes me pretty happy whenever I look at it. Um, you can see it's still in order because I'm still just looking through the images. I have not done any readings with it, but I just really dig this artwork and I'm, I just haven't gotten, really gotten into um, Paulina Cassidy's work. I mean, I've always seen it. It's always beautiful. It's just always been one that it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that. Um, this one I happened to find locally at a at a shop in the mall, which was, I love that we're finally starting to see tarot in more mainstream areas. Um, but this was one, they had a couple of um, her decks and this was the one that I decided to pick up just to start with. And um, having said that and having looked through it and held it and looked through the images, I have decided I think I need all of her decks. <laughs> Cause I absolutely love this artwork. It kind of, it does remind me a little bit of the Shadowscapes, just in the, you know, it's very detailed, but unlike the Shadowscapes, this is, I can see the detail really well, and it's, it's easy for me to make out what's going on in the card, and I don't, I don't struggle 
I don't struggle with this one the way I have with the shadowscapes, but um, I do really want to trim it. I don't know if I will or not because they are so busy, but I really like when my cards go together to tell a story. And sometimes when you have those borders, it inhibits the flow. So we shall see what I end up doing with this deck, but it's just absolutely gorgeous. I love the artwork. I think I need all the rest of her decks and just have the complete collection because I love it. It makes me happy. It's so beautiful. Whoops. As I knock everything over and drop my cards. That's just a gorgeous deck. So definitely one of my new favorites in my collection and one that's probably going to lead to a Paulina Cassidy collection. So that is the Paulina Tarot. So next we have the Soul Journey Lesson Cards. And this is one of my favorite little oracles. I love the backs on these ones. Um, it's got gold gilding on it, which as I mentioned before, I'm not really a fan of gilding, but it's, you know, it's nice, it works. Um, and these cards have just a beautiful like mandala type figure in the center. And then they have a, a keyword and a key phrase. And for the most part, I really like them. I've had this deck for quite a while and it has a really good balance of light and shadow. Um, anyway, I this deck pairs really well with readings, um, just pretty much any kind of tarot reading. I haven't found any deck that this really doesn't work with, so I use it quite frequently. It's also great to just pull a card for just like a quick message or maybe to kind of clarify what's going on inside inside your head. So I won't flip through all of them here, but I mean, there's nothing like spectacular about the artwork. I mean, this card's pretty, but it's just, it's very simple, I guess. But the um, keywords and the key phrases are really where this deck shines. So it's a great little deck. It does have a great little guidebook with it, but you really don't need it because you can just, you know, pull a card and like happiness. I'm aware that being happy means I am on the right path. It's just beautiful little messages, but they're not all sunshine and rainbows. And that's kind of, you know, what I like about this deck is it's, it's very well balanced between the light and the shadow. So that is the soul, the soul's journey lesson cards. Next we have the Sacred Traveler Oracle, Oracle cards, and I have trimmed this one. So I turned this into a square deck and I edged the sides, and I have shown this deck in a couple of my mod videos. Um, but the reason I made it square was because it had pretty significant purple borders on it, and it had um, titles and, and key phrases, which I didn't really mind, but didn't always resonate with me. And the image inside, it was fairly square. So I just decided to turn it into a square deck and then you can read it directionally, which is really cool. But the artwork in this deck is just stunning. I love it. It is one of my favorite um, little decks. I read it very intuitively, but the guidebook is really great. Um, I do have like, I made a, a photo cheat sheet before I actually trimmed this deck so that um, I can go back and look, but the pictures are in the guidebook, so you don't really need to have the titles on there if you have the guidebook, because you can just go find the picture and look up the message. Um, so there's great messages in the book, but I just really don't feel that I need it. Like I can read this deck really well intuitively, and I think the artwork is just stunning, and I love the matte cardstock, and it's really fabulous for just a little, um, intuitive additional hit to just about any reading and you can read it directionally so sometimes I put it between two oracle or two tarot cards to see where the energy is moving so that's just my cute little trimmed and squared sacred traveler oracle cards next we have soul cards and this is actually um, soul cards one and two and I do keep them in their boxes right now only because I haven't made a bag for them but they're really hard to get in and out of this box so I need to go ahead and make a bag for them um, this is just this is soul cards one this is just a gorgeous um, very intuitive Oracle I mean everybody has seen it the artwork is amazing and it is done with um, touch drawing by the artist and it's just you know what can I say about this deck that everybody else hasn't already said um, it's their cards are big so they're great for meditation it's kind of
kind of look through this as soul cards too. It's upside down. So just really evocative artwork. Um, very soulful, very heart-centered. Definitely meant for intuitive reading. There are no keywords or messages or phrases that come with this deck. So it's just a really gorgeous one. It pairs really well with just about any tarot deck as well. And it's great for just pulling a card for meditation, which is generally what I use it for. Um, but I have done some... Um, intuitive exercises and that kind of thing with it as well and it works beautifully for that. So that is soul cards one and two. So next up we have the empathetic oracle and this is a deck that probably could have easily gone in my um, earthy based decks because it does have a very earthy vibe and it is by the same creator of the um, shamanic healing oracle cards. But I do find that this deck is very centered in the soul very heart whoops very heartfelt and, and very soulful and that's just how it, it reads for me um, it pairs beautifully with the, the shamanic healing of course or yeah the shamanic healing um, and it does have a very earthy vibe to it but I just think that like it's just very heart centered it's very it doesn't shy away from, um, you know, the hard things, but it is very supportive in the way that it, you know, embraces those things. So it's very, it's a very empathetic oracle, right? Don't you love that? So anyway, I mean, it does have a very earthy and kind of shamanic vibe to it. Oh, it does have the gold gilding. I got to show that. There's the beautiful backs. And it is this gorgeous mat that I hope that Schiffer goes to for all of their decks. So yeah, it's just a beautiful, really supportive oracle. Um, it pairs well with all kinds of decks from contemporary to um, the more earthy based or shamanic. It just, it, it's just really versatile, it works for everything. So that is the empathetic oracle. Next we have the winged enchantment oracle deck. And this is a deck that I got secondhand. So it's kind of, it's a little used, but that's okay. Um, here's the beautiful backs, and it's quite a large deck, um, and it has it has artwork by Lisa Hunt, which I think is just beautiful. Um, this is a deck that I actually bought for my daughter, and it was a little too airy for her. She tends to go for, I mean, it's very earthy, and it's very supportive. It's a really supportive deck, um, but it was just, she loves birds, but it was just a little too... I'm not even sure to tell you the truth. She's a, she's a little more edgy than this, I suppose you could say. She likes those kind of edgier decks. So anyway, it ended up back in my collection and I'm super excited to have it. Like, oh, how gorgeous is that? The artwork is stunning. Um, the messages are really fabulous. The My biggest complaint with this deck is that unless you really know your animal energy, which I do not, you do have to rely on the guidebook because there is just the um, bird association on there, which is fine. I mean, this I use, I've used more just to do a, a poll and then read the message out of the book rather than pairing it with anything or using it to add further messages to a tarot reading, just because I don't like to have to rely on a guidebook when I'm doing a tarot reading, just personal preference. But I do enjoy pulling it just to pull the card. Um, I haven't edged it or anything yet, but it probably will. It's that beautiful borderless. I mean, just the imagery is just top notch. It is phenomenal in this deck. So, and it, the messages are really great. They're very supportive and I really enjoy working with it. Um, I just kind of use it as a one pull for just a quick message. So that is the winged enchantment Oracle deck. And here we have the Nature's Whispers Oracle cards. And this is a deck that I also got secondhand. So it's a little bit on the worn side, but that's okay. I don't mind. Um, this is a deck that I haven't, I put it back in order, but um, I haven't done a ton of work with it. A few of the keywords or the phrases down at the bottom don't particularly resonate with me, but the artwork is just so stunning that I am totally like willing to overlook that. It does not bother me at all. Um, like this is just so beautiful. This is one of my favorite cards in the deck. 
and um, yeah, like assurance. I'm not, that's not really the keyword I would associate with this imagery, but um, you know, it does work. I just, the imagery is so beautiful that I overlooked that. I, I have thought about just chopping those off and I very well might and just use this as an intuitive deck because it really is the artwork that does it for me. Um, you know, the guidebook is fine and you can definitely read, um, you know, these messages with the guidebook, but that's really not my favorite to do with an oracle. I like my oracle to just be able to, you know, use as is on the card. So I'll probably trim those off at some point just and read it intuitively because I love the artwork. I think it's absolutely beautiful. But just don't always dig these uh, key phrases at the bottom. But, you know, that happens from time to time with oracles. So that is, I mean, it's a large oracle. It's gorgeous matte. They do stick together a little bit. Um, but it's a gorgeous oracle deck. As you can see, it's, it's very quite large. And there's the beautiful backs. So yeah, I really do enjoy having it in my collection. I have used it a couple of times with, um, in conjunction with tarot readings and it works really well for that. But again, I read it more intuitively and I don't really pay attention to what's on the bottom. So that is the Nature's Whispers Oracle Cards. Thank you so much for checking out my collection of soulful and heart-centered tarot and oracle decks. I would love to hear about the inspirational or supportive decks in your collection or your thoughts on the ones I have shown here. So feel free to leave a comment below. And if you'd like to check out the rest of my deck collection, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell for notifications. Thank you again for watching and I hope you will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.